Shall I start, sir? Yes, may I request Dr. Shalini Yado, event coordinator of the month and executive member of ISPEL, start the event formally. A very good evening to all determined ISPELians, August academicians present here and strong will scholars who are present here today on the day of 61st Sunday Sahitik Satsang to taste the bliss of our regular events, which are organized after frequent intervals on Sundays. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ghansham sir for giving me this chance to organize the events of uh, November month. He is a source of immense power and uh, encouragement. So here today we have with us as resource person, Rochelle Potka Ma'am, an award-winning poet and author. Ma'am is an esteemed author of several good books, including Four Degree of Separations, Paper Asylum, and Bombay Hangover. I welcome you, ma'am, at ISPEL India. It is really an overwhelming feeling for me today uh, with your gracious presen presence here. I heartily welcome Dr. K.S. Saradambal, ma'am, also as a chairperson and Ms. Rijwana Khatun as master of ceremonies for the event. Welcome you all to the, uh, to the platform of ISPEL India. Last week on Sunday, we had with us a blend of many skilled and novice poets and short story writers to make our day very lively and full of joy with their excellent recitations and readings, fulfilling the sole objective of ISPEL India to facilitate all assisting in their strides for elevation. As we are heading towards second Sunday of the month of November, a month of crimson sunsets, parting birds, sad hymns of sea, and passionate wind songs in the pines, our creativity instinct and crave are also increasing more and more. So those who are into creative writing or wish to start writing, these lines are for them from a poem of Benedict Smith, I wish I wrote the way I thought. Quote, I wish I wrote the way I thought, obsessively, incessantly, with maddening hunger. I would write to the point of suffocation. I would write myself into nervous breakdowns, manuscripts spiraling out like tentacles into abysmal nothing. And I would write about you a lot more than I should, unquote. Today's talk is related to it for expansion of our area of creative skills and creative writing process to write effectively. Hence, Rochelle Ma'am is an excellent hibernator and her book, Paper Asylum, is such a beautiful illustration of her poetic sensibility with therapeutic uh, effects and amalgamation of prose, venturing to relish aesthetics of relationships and nature through her imaginative flights experiencing focus and focus of human beings in reality, transience, and permanence. Ma'am's haiku poems are like, I'm putting few lines of my own here. Quote, bards art of filling, thoughts, colors with lyrics brush on reader's canvas. Unquote. And I feel now we are all very eager to listen to Rochelle Ma'am on uh, this uh, platform today that how to craft well, uh, either uh, you're writing a short story or you're writing a, a haiku or uh, you're writing a haiban. So uh, without much ado, I would like to take privilege of introducing our today's master of ceremonies, Mrs. Uh, sorry, uh, Miss uh, Rejwana Khatun, who is working as an assistant professor and head in the Department of English at Government RBR NES PG College, Jashnapoon Nagar, Chhattisgarh. Ma'am is a gold medalist in her UG and PG courses. She has been teaching American literature, poetry, diaspora studies, history of English literature, research methodology, and essay writing and grammar to the students of both graduate and undergraduate levels. As a member of the departmental committee, Ma'am has handled admission procedures, various cultural activities, conduction of online classes. Moreover, she has guided PG students also for their thesis work and research work. As a member of board of studies at uh, one university, she has also assisted in restructuring the uh, syllabi of uh, MA. 
She has participated and presented research papers in national and uh, international journals. Ma'am has been participating in various professional development programs and training programs which are conducted by MHRD for her knowledge enhancement. Ma'am has also conducted some events uh, as a convener, uh, some FDPs and uh, other events. It is a matter of immense pleasure for me to introduce such an erudite academician who has achieved so much at such an early age. Uh, and I welcome you, uh, Rizwana, to proceed the event further. Over to you, Rizwana, ma'am. Thank you so much, Shalini, ma'am, for that warm introduction. A very delightful and startling evening. I welcome all the dignities, academicians, intellectuals, and professors at 64th Sunday Sahitik Satsang, organized by ISPEL, Indian Society for the Promotion of English Language and Literature. Julia Cameron once said, in order to create, we draw from our inner well. This inner well, an artistic reservoir, is ideally like a well-stocked fish pond. If we don't give some attention to upkeep, our well is apt to become depleted, stagnant, or blocked. I spell with the motto of facilitate to elevate, facilitates us to keep upkeep our artistic reservoir so that we can elevate our artistic skills. I spell has given a platform to provide information galore with the confluence of masterminds. It's Sunday, since the inauguration of I spell. On 5th September 2020, erudite scholars and eminent fraternity gathered to exchange and share experiences of different platforms. Today, as the resource person, we have with us a renowned Indian author and poet, Roshan Potkar, with us. I extend warm welcome to you, ma'am. With regards, I welcome the chairperson of today's session, Dr. K.S. Shara Dambal. Assistant Professor and Head, Department of English, Sri Vasavi College, Erode, Tamil Nadu. Now I take opportunity to welcome Professor G.A. Ghansham, sir, General Secretary and Founder of ISPEL, who painstakingly making made efforts to make ISPEL function in such hard times. It is his leadership that brings the high accolades under the umbrella of ISPEL to drench our thirst of knowledge. I also extend regards to Dr. Shalini Yadav, ma'am, event coordinator of ISPEL for the month of November. I also send my regards to the esteemed and focused members of ISPEL and all the dignitaries gathered here by Zoom and YouTube Live who are interested in this literary aspect. Before handing over the session to the resource person, let me take an opportunity to introduce the resource person it has rightly been said by W. H. Auden, a poet or writer, before anything else, is a person who is painstakingly in love with language. The resource person of today's session is one such creative writer who, according to her own words, inhales and exhales words and stories. She further adds, 90% of her life has got to do with writing. I am profusely elated to introduce such creative genius and sensible persona, Roshan Potka. Roshan Potka, ma'am, is a remarkable literary critic, poet, anthology writer, editor, and author par excellence. Her stories and poetries are acclaimed on national and international platforms. She has been opening minds and touching hearts through her trail-blazing poetry collections. She is widely acclaimed for her insightful poetry. She is the winner of the Northern Giral Literary Prize in Poetry, UK 2018, for Tu Daras. Her, The Girl from Lal Bazar, was shortlisted for the Grigory Odenov International Poetry Prize, Ireland 2018. Was Fishes was the first runner-up of Indian Grand Poetry Contest 2018. There is a long list of prizes won by Roshan Potkar, ma'am. Her excellent writing style led her short story collection, Paper Asylum, to be shortlisted for Rabindranath Tagore Literary Prize 2020. Her unsatiable interest in literary world led her to be, led her 
to present her first screenplay, A Brown Coat, which was a semi-finalist at the Atlanta Film Festival Screenwriting Competition 2020. This charismatic speaker is widely anthologized. She has read her poetry in India, Bali, Macau, Sterling, Glasgow, Hong Kong, Ukraine, Hungary, Bangladesh, and the Gold Coast. We are all excited to listen to your session, ma'am. Your session on a word is a worm in the apple of the mind, an overview of creative writing process. Over to you, ma'am. The screen is yours now. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, iSpell, for inviting and having me over here today. Good evening to everybody. Uh, I, I would have loved to see all your faces, but I know it's not possible in a Zoom window. Uh, so I wonder if I can share my screen. I'm going going ahead and sharing my screen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You can. Yeah. All right. So uh, first and foremost, I'm very thankful to be here, and it's my pleasure because I love the concept of a talk. Unlike a story, it doesn't have to end but it will end, of course. And unlike a workshop, it doesn't need writing exercises and critique time. Now I've structured this talk into three sections. One is loftiness, one is craft, and one is craftiness. But only you will know individually which is which. I feel we are all made up of stardust, sure. But we are made up of the qualia of daily stimuli that passes through us. Say if there were 75,000 thoughts trafficking the mind, there might be 10, just 10, that confluence acutely like key scenes to make it a happy or a sad day. I will talk a little later about mind care, you know, of a creative writing person. But we become what we breathe. We write the way we breathe. In long and short breaths, I wonder, Longer the exhalation, deeper the prose. Staccato breaths for screenplays and poems with line breaks. We are disturbed and we write. We need closure and we write. We need to resist, redeem, recover, and we write. And so here I begin. Because this talk that will only be the beginning without end I will begin anew with each slide that will also be its continuation. I once thought, and I put this in some poem, some, that if a day is a life, a word is a story. And so I wondered, what is a word? And I'm sure we have all wondered about this because these are the building blocks of how we communicate, how we weave together language, communication, stories, whatever we need to. So what is a word? And so I thought of my little list. It might be your list, it might not be, but I was just trying to seek the word. So I thought the word had these many, these many things. And that's why each word in the thesaurus, in the dictionary, even though if they have the same meanings, are different because they differ from their weight or the speed in them. They differ in their depth or the gravity or the mood in them. Some have more song, some have more music, some have more color, some have more imagery in them, some have time trapped in them, and some need to have a rhythmic resonance with the word that comes before and the word that comes after. And so it creates a lyrical sentence, like a lyrical line, rhythmic in poetry, but also lyrical in prose. So I know that uh, it's not just us. Probably so many people are in love with words. We hold them very close, not just words that we use to write, but words that we use for each other to express love, to express fondness, to express anger. So this is what I thought of words. I also think that a word is a cell. We build civilizations one cell at a time, mutating and multiplying cells at a time into the tissue of literature, the skin of meaning. 
what i found is that not all of poetry is what i could grasp when i initially started reading poetry i could not like a lot of poetry couldn't hold my attention some said this was good poetry some said that was bad poetry yes we all have our tastes and there are many genres and styles to suit but over the years i also liked what i didn't like before i understood what i didn't before and then realized that text too are like light and sound you can't see all of it you can't hear all of it but if you are patient with the evolution it happens for that light to reach you you need to find your darkness but the beauty of this is there is always some more to discover because knowledge is endless another thing about writing and this is more to with the amniotic environment of creative writing is that to know your best times so that you could follow the pareto's principle the 80 20 ratio where you can write the most in the least amount of time you know i curiously write poetry on mondays okay when i'm closer to sleep i have just woken up and i'm just starting the day but the day is not igniting that is when i'm closer to my subconscious and poetry just happens so if you know which part of the day or night is yours and i'm talking to the very young students who might be listening in uh because they keep asking at workshops in colleges as to when do we write what is the time to write actually you have the answer you will have to follow your biorhythm to know when is the best time and that time needs to be preserved and protected i have written in many forms and a few genres haiku haibun free verse flash fiction short story and now the novel and the screenplay also in speculative genres and human drama and relationships sometimes i feel like a huntress picking the scent of a wild animal going into the wilderness and woods marking time sweat watching waiting praying studying territorial marks and finally finding the musk many a times i found myself changing as much as the character or the story through a kaleidoscopic turn of a new day a new epiphany that completely changes the game a story is discovered excavated not created that's what i have come to believe in come to realize it already existed like a named island shrouded in mist and we or me the seafarer sets out long and hard and vast sometimes thirsty hungry sleepy to unmiss the island and all i do is give it a name perhaps all i do is cartograph its length and breadth study its terrain and topography discover its people its characters and language and then tell its tale but it always exi- always existed like you like me sometimes when i have trapped a story it is a large elephant gray elephant occupying the whole room this isn't the elephant you can't talk about this is the obsession it swallows you whole like the six blind men or women i start at its tail to find that story sometimes at its trunk sometimes at its tusk until i figure out the whole damn thing it might take years or eons but i have finally the outline with a shuddering gray skin of the elephant in the room and you just know when you have the whole animal in front of you the wild animal the creative writing process is not linear it is cyclical it starts long before inception it ends long after consumption a story expands in the mind and milieu of a reader's life and mind like the expansion of a little universe itself every star shimmering as it gleams it may be a sentence it may be a scene they say right through the darkness to the heart of darkness through the agony of the protagonist by the way that crazy white eyed baby elephant that you see in the left corner is the dark gray of the writer's block okay it's, it's actually teasing you and it's dark gray because there would be times when you don't really have the writer's block but you feel an idea block you're just locked for maybe in for me it is 3 days it will differ for different people 
but it's there teasing you we can make elephants of universes that expand in our minds and those of the reader and a story is an entire universe not just a world each character i felt was a star named after the ancestors of archetypes from the collective unconscious stories multiply in the effects of their interpretations all the forms i work on are refracted ways of telling a story whether i wrote the metamorphosis of joe pereira in bombay hangovers or the poem gathering of my entire family or the hyben seed or the haiku of the silence of the estuary this is something i really trust in the function of the first draft is to help you figure out your story the function of every draft after that is to figure out the most dramatic way to tell the story this is also something i go by write what disturbs you what you fear what you have not been willing to speak about be willing to be split open i think that's also covers from where do you get our ideas because this is a common question new writers ask sometimes not all new writers but some writers some new writers ask from where do i get my stories you can try prompts and triggers but i think the better way is to just look at what you are running away from what you fear what disturbs you what makes you very angry that is all the material and if not all that i have even found that philosophical epiphanies because as i'm going on my journey of life there are so much of more disappointments you face so much of more lessons you learn all these philosophical epiphanies actually become the kernel for a story as we move to uh, creative writing and its forms i thought of telling you actually sharing my bio data in a way that i feel my poetry is my bio data my bio note and also taking you through the free form free verse forms which of course you are you are aware of uh, because free verse is the most accessible poetry form and i will be taking you to two two three other forms through this but here here uh, this was the first shortlisted poem which i wrote a long while ago and the second poem that i will share is one of the more recent poems and here i'm looking also at the thought progression of our creative writer because that's how you actually can look at your work as to what was your first work that you published and what was the most recent work and you would see how you have grown or evolved yeah and that uh, tells you so much more about your self your the way you're shaping uh, thought and the world is shaping you so this one knotted inside me at the time of my birth My small town Kalyan did not have a library. It had no road rage, few beggars, one defunct traffic signal at Murbad Road, and fewer cars. Horizontal buildings silhouetting the sun in shanties, chawls, and cottages. Its outline gianted and dwarfed with self-sustaining jobs of kirana wallas, primary school teachers, factory workers, dentists. general practitioners cycle repair shops and a small bank let's not forget on rambag lane it was stone deaf to career ladders six sigmas hierarchies mnc's pecking orders filled with pawalas mohammedans hindus bawas north indians south indians non catholics non hindus non muslims non dalits and non brahmins the ice factory owner the mayor a smuggler a customs officer were the rich their bungalow gardens terraces compound walls sprinted over by well fed dogs pressing against our imagination mostly during new year resolutions the sindhis lived in a neighbor town with plenty of gold and goods in the year of my sister's birth some of their buildings collapsed like crumbling cake in blood and crust There was one gang war in Kalyan, one Anglo-Indian killed by a goan goon on a night road, a gunshot running through his race, history, legacy, and a schoolboy murdered in cold gang boy rage. 
I with the other girls, were bottom fent, walking through the college corridors. That was all we had before I left for the city. But the town I had left behind, like shoes outside a temple, multiplied around me a thousand times. So this was my first poem, not the first one I wrote, but the first one that saw the light of day in a way that it got shortlisted at a price and it made me feel I'm a poet. I always thought I was a short story writer and I still am a short story writer more than anything else. I mean, there was um, the great poet, uh, late Manglish Dabral, who said, you're the only poet who can write stories in poetry so well and get away with it. <laughs> I do believe, I do believe him. He got me right. The second poem uh, that I will read uh, was much, much later when I had a lot of water pass, so-called pass under the bridge of time. And uh, I was a different person. I was not this hesitant poet, but I was not looking at my town. I was not looking at only myself. I was also looking outward at the world. This poem called War Specials. But before I, I, I just read it, I always preamble this poem because there's so much of violence and war in, in, from our houses to our countries to the world. All sorts of wars, actually. Uh, I have been thinking about those people who were voiceless recruits in wars. And I thought of the animals because there are so many, so many people who do not co-opt to be in wars but they're still there in wars somehow. And so I thought of animals and I just chased this thought and that is how it works, right? We are sometimes, I always think of these little, little wild animals, basically all these ideas for me are little wild animals and they just drop their scent and you just chase after them. You go after them, you do the research, you do whatever you want or you incubate, you think, you collect all your thoughts, ideas, whatever. Once they can't fit in your head, you. You just start unleashing them on paper. And that's how this poem came about. War Specials. As we went to war over animals on our plates, pigeons too were seized by their wing flaps, rings around claws, a phone number and address with Shakargad and Narowal in Urdu. Spy pigeons, unbelieving of borders, photographed carried images guided bombs, like knights for horses that bit and kicked and elephants that were machines. As we went to war over animals on our plates, animals were politicized too. Pigs squealed, camels patrolled, mules carried supplies, oxen, artillery. Moose were trained not to be gun shy for deep snow cavalry and dogs threw their weight or sniffed out mines. Monkeys dipped in oil and fire were thrown into enemy territory. When the seagulls flew, they carried torpedoes, dead rats, explosives in their bellies. Vultures, pelicans thrown to air came back darkly and powderly. The new recruits were sharks with brain implants, cats controlling vermin, Chickens detecting poison, bones and beaks in war memorials. It wasn't only Noah's dove that returned after the flood. Molotov cocktails. We haven't otherwise even left the bacteria, virus, fungi. Embedded with heavy explosives, unseen beasts. Second only to racial slurs, we now have words to reproduce in our bodies and years, time over time, over our grand internet, staying in memory, trolled by embittered species. And words, they have a separate gallantry. For my other writings uh, and poems, stories, you will find them either published online, like the top of the mind is skirt to the Raza, the girl from Lal Bazaar. And or you will find them in stories like Bombay hangovers, which is around caste, class and religion in Bombay. The coordinates of us of Sarva Aungshatu Napan is an English and Marathi poetry in cross translations. It's a co-authored book. 
now here before i move on uh, to uh, tell you about the haiku and the haibun form i must stop to say that it is so difficult actually in a talk in a talk to encapsulate how to write different forms but i will still try to give you a very tiny little table really not really a very fixed it's not a fixed rule it's a tool so because i've written in different forms of poetry story novels screenplay flash fiction haiku haibun what i look at is what is its inception times when do you incept ideas i feel for a poem you can your inception time and your writing time is almost the same because a poem strikes you like a light like a flash of lightning it's a knee jerk reaction but you when you write the first line you actually have you can pull the whole poem out okay that may not be the same case with a short story a short story requires a little more incubation that is in my experience your experiences can differ everyone's experiences will differ in how they write but my experience suggests that when i get an idea for a short story i let it brew i let it uh, evolve okay I, every day i i am thinking about it chewing chewing it and when i feel the incubation time is enough automatically those words want to spill over into the first draft so this is not like a poem then the writing itself we need to be forgiving as writers we already know it for the first drafts i feel you need to be forgiving even for your third and fourth drafts but definitely the first draft you need to be very forgiving because if you have your editor on that person is going to interfere all the time and you will be rewriting instead of writing so writing uh, the first drafts all my first drafts are very very forgivable okay i would say that it is in the next drafts that you have after time intervals that you actually go and edit it out you edit you remove i i tend to overwrite a little bit okay because i want to say so many things and then i have to cut cut it down so i'm a good editor as well i know even one extra word like a bead on a necklace which is not needed which is too heavy in fact you learn the heaviness of a word in haiku because that is the classical form wherein you cannot put one extra word the whole haiku will collapse and so you just have those many words i'm not saying do the syllable count but no less you are aware of its brevity and because of that i always thought of the haiku where you weigh, weigh words like a goldsmith weighs gold that much in gram to gram the editing process is this beautiful process of time intervals and i feel time intervals are important because you grow as a person your relationship with yourself changes your relationship with life changes with the world changes every day you are a different person because of that your relationship with your art evolves and changes and so you grow with the story sometimes i have written a short story and it has taken me 3 years later to find the ending that i am resonant with and that ending could be just that one line it could be that one paragraph but i do not get it for long and i have to wait and wait and wait and it will come one day so i have a lot of these open baskets of things which are incomplete you know sometimes i think ideas are like uh there is half an idea sitting like a person on a park bench waiting for the other half of an idea to come okay until that person doesn't come seasons will pass and you can't move on you can't move on to have a conversation one fine day that other person that other half idea or a fraction of an idea comes sits on the park bench and the conversation begins i have seen that many times in all different forms so patience is something that you learn to wait for that thing to get complete of course here i'm not talking about de deadlines deadlines are only for submissions i don't believe that deadlines are for creation because then i'm not sure whether you're creating what you really want to create but i understand industry deadlines as well especially for screen writing uh the other thing is submitting submitting for all these forms is different okay so if the inception was different incubation was different writing editing times were different submitting is also different poetry i think has the has the most immediate beginners luck and it ha is it has portability it has acceptability it's the fastest moving form but not the same with short stories definitely not so easy with novels with screen writing it's the most difficult till you break through so i also think the last point on the table of all these forms is finding your way through the labyrinth because finally 
you want your writing to be read to be consumed to be seen so that is a final end point and that differs from each form okay if there are any more questions about this i'm sure we will take it up after afterwards after this talk i'll move on to the haiku okay so i conduct these intense workshops on haiku and haibun here we see just few haiku and in case uh, you're not aware of a haiku in the sense of what i'm telling you we are aware of course that it's a three line poem we are aware of the syllable count of 575 but what you're not aware of if you haven't practiced enough of haiku or you've not been to you you you've not you've kept away, you've been kept away from the secret is that it is not just a 575 uh, syllable count it's not just three lines it can be one and two lines as well what is most important is it's two images it's two images juxtaposed and this is the beauty of the haiku and that's the reason it becomes the most difficult form to write in when i teach in workshops there are people who are acquainted to the haiku for the first time they get addicted in such a way that they are writing haiku forever any time you meet them and say hi what's up they'll say can i share one haiku and be like okay share <laughs> and they'll say do you think this is okay do you think it's okay you know why because of the two images one image comes from nature one image comes from human existence it's so magical to see what do you mean as a human being in nature i mean are we even aware of what's happening outside our windows right now is there a bird flying what does that bird mean to you what does the sun that's tilting right now in its sunset trajectory mean to you if you stop and think about your existence versus the tilting of the sun on today's sunday and you wait for that feeling to emerge and you happen to write a haiku you will see that it is magical it the haiku is bigger than a novel if the novel is a big bang the haiku is the big crunch but actually the haiku is bigger than a novel and that is its beauty that this is the only form that is put in a tumbler okay it's the entire universe in a tumbler now i have just got five examples here but the haiku is the most difficult form to write but it is addictive and magical let's take the first uh, uh, you know example the color of earth on a farmer's bare back multi grain bread now multi grain bread is a fragment usually it is of two words this is an image in itself but it's of two words it mostly could be uh, from nature or human existence you could choose that that's not important what's important is generally uh, you i saw it of two words because it's a fragment and two words is very difficult to write an image in two words but multi grain bread now just close your eyes and think where what is multi grain bread where would you find it you will all have your own image okay everyone's image will differ a bit the next image of the haiku the color of earth on a farmer's bare back okay you can see it everyone will see it if you just close your eyes or you just meditate you will see the color of earth on a farmer's bare back if you are all with me you will see brown you will see glistening dark brown the earth brown okay and multi grain bread you will also see it in a kind of a brown a different shade so here what dominates the haiku besides everything else is the color the sense of color but more than that once you have these images together it gives you an entire story of class it gives you so many stories of toil and grain because multi grain bread is not just a grain for the bread but the grain in, on with the salt of the farmer because his sweat is salt it's grain you will see so many things the more you hover around a haiku it will start opening up a lot of things for you usually to curate a haiku you need to actually write an essay it's that long all right okay i hope i'm still there because i got a message that uh, i i think i'm still on right i'm not got disconnected no ma'am you are using yeah. your studio yeah. yeah. okay. please continue all right so now we see the second uh, haiku and i i'm usually covering it up in a jiffy because this is not a workshop but had this been a workshop we would have actually you know like broken down images and 
uh, conjured images together. And that would be the fun of it. But you look at this, uh, mustard fields, a thimble full of sun on each blossom. If you just look at these two images, you would see the color, okay, the sheen and gl glimmer of this whole field. Take traffic, traffic snarl, and you can immediately hear the honking. This is one image. I remember the song of estuaries is the image too. This is my haiku, so I can talk a little bit more about it. I was sitting in a traffic snarl in Bombay, and I was thinking of a diametrically opposite piece. Where was that corner of peace I had last, which was so away from this? And that was on an estuary in Dumas. And I thought about the silence, that song, that silent song of an estuary. And that's how this uh, haiku is more dominant with sound. Now you could have many things. You don't have to be worried about which, which sense dominates it. What you need to worry is, rather not worry, but collate is images from nature. So you start observing nature much more. You start observing the flight of butterflies, you know, the lays of a cat. I don't know, the sun spilling from your window. And you start to wonder how it makes sense to you in that point of time. Look at this one. Spring cleaning this futile search for my lost youth. Now, this is not really a haiku as much as it's a senryu. Senryu is when both images come from human existence. Spring cleaning is also a human job. But the word spring is because it has a, you know, a weather, it's a weather word called kigo. Because of that, it looks like it's, it's more of a haiku. But what's important is what Nadkarni has done with this. Just hover on this. Spring cleaning. This is image one. This futile search for my lost youth. And just with that, just with that. Now you would be in a different place. I would be in a different place. Probably I'm, uh, I, I'm imagining a loft. You're imagining a garage where the spring cleaning is done or an attic, doesn't matter. What is important is this futile search for my lost youth. It told you so much about the progress of time for the poet, the transience that's happening and something that is still very, very permanent, aging that happens or time that passes. I also must talk about the link and shift of what a haiku and a haibun has. Now, the Japanese poets believe that no matter how disconnected something might seem, they actually belong to the same wheel of life. So they will come together. So it's just one breath away, one thought away. This is not cause and effect, these two images. But these two images are something that will come together in resonance if you just try. And you know, sometimes we do that in workshops. We just change one small, one small word of one in one image, and the meaning changes. One word you change, and the meaning changes. It's almost like, you know, a color drop put in water, and the water color changes. That much you will see the agility of words in a haiku. Once you once you practice this form, which is very classical. You become more sensitive to words no matter where you use them, whether you use them for big novels, big screenplays, big nonfiction pieces, it doesn't matter because you start becoming sensitive to each word. Okay. All right. Um, this is a haibun. First, I'll read the haibun out to you, and then I'll talk a little bit about what the haibun is. Still ball. His father's shadow rises every night with the silhouettes of knives, blades, sickles, belts, and whips growing and looming over his mother's face. These rise into his dreams too with Amar Chitrakata, Super Commando Dhruva, Superman, Batman, Bone, The Dark Knight Returns, Sandman, X-Men, and Watchmen. They rise into his mother's screams and voice bubbles from Robo, Final Fantasy, Star Wars, and Avatar. There is always good versus evil. Evil loses in the end, its shadow diminishing. Someone always saves the damsel. The meek inherit the earth. Good things happen to good people. His father whips his mother so hard that the shadows in his dreams flicker like a TV set or candle wick. Some shadows do not diminish even after he opens his eyes. In fact, they spew from every crevice, 
spawning from the corners of his eyes. They merge with the original shadow of original sin. Why couldn't the superhero in him rise when he knew the names and dialogues, voices and actions of every superhero, every comic, animation, movie, and sci-fi film? How many superheroes make one superhero? How many will it take to make him? Periwinkle Sky, the unwanted butterfly after a breakup. Now the Haibun is prose interspersed with haiku. I'm telling for those who don't know the form. Here the prose and the poetry is juxtaposed besides the images in the haiku being juxtaposed. Like here we see the image. Periwinkle sky is image one. The unwanted butterfly after a breakup is image two. You put them together. Periwinkle sky in itself means nothing much. It's just a periwinkle blank sky, a beautiful sky. It doesn't mean much. The unwanted butterfly after a breakup has a lot of potency once you start dissecting it. Why unwanted butterfly? Now, since I am the poet of, of this haibun, I can talk about it. Otherwise, I would have to get another haibun here to talk about. Uh, I, when I was writing this haibun, I wrote about domestic violence witnessed by a very young boy who couldn't do anything much with it. Therefore, the title is Stillborn. So he is this boy who is looking at various things around him and he is transmuting that, but he can't do anything. Whether it is graphic novels, whether it's comic books, whether it's movies, but he can't do anything yet. He doesn't do anything till the end because it is not his time come yet, okay, to unfurl. Maybe that's why there's something still born about courage because it takes time. So when I was thinking about the haiku, I wanted to jump. I did not want it to be in the same breadth. I wanted it to jump not just one, two steps, but using link and shift five steps, perhaps. I knew it would connect in the end because life will always connect in the end. No matter how much of chaos theory is applicable, life will connect. So I was thinking about what do I want to say in the haiku that is not said in the prose. So I thought about another case altogether about, let's say, two lovers. They're newly going to get married. They have bought a house. Now, this is not in the haiku, but I'm just telling you how the thought process works. It's crazy. You know, you will agree with me that it's crazy. So this is not behind the haiku. This is like behind the stage of the haiku. So I thought of two people in love. They, they say they want to buy a house because they want to settle in that house after marriage. But there is a breakup. There is a breakup. And now they don't want that house. So you were waiting for a butterfly. You're waiting for the metamorphosis of a dream. But now you don't want that dream. So it's an unwanted butterfly after a breakup. When I was thinking about the image, I wanted to keep the first image very simple because I wanted the weight of the haiku in the second image. Yeah, otherwise it would become too heavy, too much of image. It would be too strong. I wanted to keep one very fika and one very tika. So this is how it came about. Now, anyone could have said, Are, but how is the prose and the haiku? There's no connection. Yeah, there's no connection really because I'm talking of completely different people, completely different households. But if you look at the essence of the emotion, it is absolutely the same thing. In one case, the courage doesn't open up inside the boy, so it remains stillborn. In the other, it does metamorphose, but the dream metamorphosis is too late for the reality of the people. And so I'm talking of metamorphosis in different ways. These are some notes, very quick notes on Haibun, you know, I, if this was a workshop, it would have been uh, very nicely, you know, we would have given time to each and everything. But since this is uh, like, you know, a quick sweep, Haibun is usually written in the present tense. It's very close to diary writing. They call it a narrative of an epiphany. And no doubt it is one epiphany that makes you want to write the Haibun. And usually you cocoon it in lyrical lines. But at the kernel, whether a Haibun is just one page long or whether it's one paragraph long with a haiku you'll always find one epiphany at the center and that in itself to sniff it out is very beautiful when you see other haibunias writing that and when you write yourself so that is it 
it has of course musicality lyricism and it has a triptych because even the title unlike the titles when we think of titles in short stories we are i don't think we are as mindful sometimes we'll get a good title sometimes we won't get a good title but in a haibun you never repeat what's in the prose and the haiku for the title so that's why i think it's triptych because it allows you to use each corner of the form for something new to tell you never repeat things generally and the link and shift as i told you because the link and shift more than imagery is about disconnected points of life which actually have a lot of interconnectedness okay i just want to check uh, how am i doing for time uh, i i hope i'm like i'm okay with time yes ma'am you can continue uh like i have five more minutes yes ma'am you can continue all right okay so very quickly i also want to talk of a few other things uh around the creative writing uh, process because i think that a creator is not an island a creator functions in an ecosystem a creator functions in the world and as a creative person myself i have found few other things which may not be to do with only the craft that's where i think is the craftiness or the loftiness the environment the amniotic environment and one of them is which is i think is the ace okay is the power of rejections and failures this when i mean i also mean the power of rejections which come from all your submissions and all of us have got these bullets in our chest a little punch on the chin we all have them i feel that you learn the most from your lowest phases the down times of your life whether they are just one day or whether they are one year i have learned the most from this in fact if i ever had to write a letter to my younger self i would have told myself the journey is long very long the destination is momentary so you must enjoy the long journey because the destination is going to end in a jiffy you will pick up most of your lessons from the for the upswing from the downswing the seeds of success come from the debris of your failure so you must play, pay very close attention take your failures and rejections very close to heart but not in an emotional way in a way as a learner has to study be open so you can also forgive yourself and move on i also think here about delusions uh, we all have them but we should just be aware that we have them i think being aware self aware delusions are much better the next card that i quickly want to talk about is psychological warfare now when we are in an ecosystem we are surrounded by all sorts of people they sometimes help you grow as a creative person and sometimes they impede it gender immaterial sometimes it's the woman who suffers sometimes it's the man i think that's immaterial but we talk a lot about mental illnesses because now we started talking about and we should talk about it but we never talk about psychological warfare the politics we play with each other backstage which doesn't show in the front stage but there's so much of time i have noticed over a period of time there's so much of time that is wasted in fending and defending yourself against stupidity why because there was somebody who was envious there was somebody who was jealous there was somebody who was insecure there was somebody who was failing and could not assimilate their failures so i feel this invisible warfare this imperceptible warfare should end eventually in this collective culture that we should build so that we all can move and we all can celebrate each other and celebrate each other's journeys where this road is not a race but it is a journey and i think when you think of it as a race it becomes very myopic and short term when you think of it as a journey you love even the pitfalls because the pitfalls teach you so much so uh i think th there's still going to be a little while later that we talk about the psychological warfare the politics that are played you know these unnecessary hierarchies and pyramids that are there uh, things that are not necessary because a lot of time is wasted in those in in cleaning up that stuff to get to your writing and i feel that is that impedes that impedes your time that impinges on your time and time cannot be manufactured time once gone doesn't come back so i feel we need to have a better uh, collective ecosystem i also believe about you know i also think about the inclusion and exclusions not just me me not much 
but I have come across people who said we did not get invited to this festival. We did not get included here and there. Constantly human beings are feeling included and excluded. I want to say just one thing. You cannot be excluded from anywhere. If you are there, you are there. A festival did not make a poet. A poet made a festival. And only words made poetry. So self-dependence, self-sustenance, these are your, your future keys. You can make yourself. You can make your opportunities. Don't wait for opportunities. And the last that I have to say is, which is the Joker card, which is the cultural uh, archipelago. I have seen the literary ecosystem and I have seen a lot of islands that are separate from each other, like camps and cliques. They are competing with each other. Sometimes literary journals are competing with each other, not in a healthy way, of course, in a bit of an unhealthy way. Camps are competing with each other. And I don't know why. When you have so much of beauty and knowledge, why are you competing like in, in the smallest possible way? Okay, why don't we aim for the highest self-actualization of knowledge in the highest possible way, in the most beautiful way? I think the word co is important here. Cooperation, community, commingling, co-authoring, company, co-habit, co-write, co-create, co-curate. It's seriously coco time right and cocoa is delicious so i feel i do pray and i do hope that we will once be a cultural archipelago where we not be small small islands of this camp and that camp this this and that that we will all come together each book will be celebrated each festival will be celebrated we won't look at the new poet or the new writer with suspicion or with threat insecurity is something that needs to be handled it's a inside business Failures need to be assimilated. That's our inside homework. We need to do that because there are sometimes many senior writers who are very hain junior writers. Pe. Senior poets who are very hain junior poets. Pe. We need to end this so that we all come together to celebrate this culture of literature. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, I forgot one small thing. Since we are talking about satsang, and I thought I must just share about my three guides who have guided me in my literature uh, journey. One is the Buddha. Uh, so I must say something. I was suffering from a gang of bullies once in the poetry ecosystem, and I so happened to visit Sikkim. I was thinking about these bullies. I mean, I love bullies. They, I, you get a lot of material, character material from bullies. I like antagonists, actually. And I, I visited Sikkim, and I reached the Institute of Tibetology, where there I saw a painting of a Buddha as he was rising to this next level of Nirvana. The Asuras were attacking him outside the realm of his halo. And he, with all his power and urja, from the center of his halo, was turning each arrow into a garland, each spear into a rose. It was one of the most powerful messages I received without words. And I think we all have this in us, the power of conversion, where you change a negative thing into a positive thing just by your internal urja. The bullies have now, of course, disappeared. The next is Gajanan Maharaj, who is of having distilled water from the gutter water. He can actually take out distilled water from the gutter water and drink. And the last is Saraswati Swan. I needn't say anything about it because I think we know about the swan and her discerning mind. Yes, so with this, I will end my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, ma'am. No doubt the talk was uh, very fruitful. I want to quote uh, one quote from uh, Aristotle. The aim of art is not to represent the outer appearance of the things, but the inner significance of it. Your talk today um, really achieved what Aristotle has said. Your poetry is beautiful and mesmerizing, has kept us captivated. Um, I also want to quote uh, one of the quote by Abdul Kalam. My learning is purposeful, creativity blossoms. And when creativity blossoms, thinking emanates. And when thinking emanates, knowledge is fully laid. I'm sure your fruitful talk will help the creativity to bloom, which will help uh, thinking to emanate, thus helping the 
candle of knowledge to be fully lit. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming in the session. Uh, shall we move to uh, question answer session? Please do. Please do. Okay. Uh, before moving on to question answer session, I shall uh, request all the participants to post their questions in the chat box. In the meanwhile, I will uh, read uh, one, of, one of the question. Words are important or feelings expressed by phrase or sentence in the poems. The question is by uh, G. Eghan Shamsha, sir. May I repeat the question? Ma yes, please. please. Yeah. Uh, sir is asking, words are important or feelings expressed by phrase or sentence in the poems? What's more important? The feelings expressed? Words or feelings? Words or feelings? Yes. Uh, they are not different. Words are feelings and feelings are words. When they become one, you will not find a difference. Okay. Uh, there is another question by Dr. A.S. Puerma. Uh, she is asking uh, about the tips to write uh, creative, uh, creatively. And she is asking, why is diction important in creative writing? How to arrive at a right word at the right time? Why you indulge in creative writing? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, um... I feel one is to read very good quality quality writing of whatever you are writing. If you're aiming to write high bun, read a lot of quality high bun. You're aiming to write novels, you do the same. When Now I'm learning to write screenplays, I'm reading tons of screenplays. So you actually learn by reading what others have written, not just for their, not just for the skills of writing. You also see what final frontiers they've explored with a theme. That's important. Everyone talks about love. How will you talk about love differently? What is love to you? So you get to see many, you map out many things, not just the styles of writing, not just the words used, but also the emotions, the feelings, the themes, most importantly, how themes are explored. And that will bring out your original voice. Another thing to talk about original voice is that uh, you, if you befriend words by reading a lot and you're curious about words, soon you will write in a way that is different because everyone has a different syntax of words. We don't use the same words, even though we use the same language. Yeah. Um, there is another question by Kirti Tiwari, ma'am. Um, just a moment. Ma'am is asking, what is more important, inspiration or perspiration in the creative <laughs> process? So uh, I think you would go with the adage only. So the inspiration is there, of course, but the perspiration comes in terms of uh, writing drafts after drafts, editing, submitting. I mean, submitting is the biggest perspiration. But uh, if you like the process, even that becomes inspiration. Like, you know, I, I do, I used to do earlier 15 minutes ka submission every night before falling off to sleep because it was the most dull and dreary thing to do. Okay, it's just writing that query letter, attaching. So I should do that just before sleeping. But eventually, even the perspiration will seem like fun. Okay, it will give you more inspiration. Uh, and inspiration, I must tell you something about the subconscious mind. Sometimes, you know, I used to even, if I didn't get sleep or if my sleep was disturbed, they do say, right, if you're closest to your subconscious mind, there's a lot of things that unfold. Sometimes it is true. It is, there is, you can actually, if you're not getting sleep or you're disturbed for some reason, or, you know, anything. It, till you get sleep, you can always park your mind in that project with those characters or with that feeling. And it's amazing what you will get from it. So even where to find inspiration? It's with your, within yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, there is a question from uh, Dr. Anupama Mora, uh, She writes, creativity combines both imagination and reality. So my question is for the poet, is it easy or possible to recognize the point where imagination ends and reality begins or vice versa? She further adds, is contemporary poetry a spontaneous overflow of emotions or a lot of writing, rewriting, editing, etc.? 
right so the to answer the first question all the questions are very interesting of course the first question is that uh, reality and and uh, imagination in itself is a point of big contest because what is your reality is not my reality so how do you how do you know where the lines blur if our realities are different so uh, only you will know what's imaginative or what's real but in creative writing everything is both real and both imagination all at the same time okay it's almost like a wave particle yeah and uh, i forgot the second question just let me repeat the question yeah uh, is contemporary poetry a spontaneous yeah. Yeah. overflow of emotions or a lot of writing rewriting editing etc it's a lot of, it's first the first draft is a spontaneous flow of whatever you may want to want to call it you could call it flow of madness you could want to call it fear you could want to call it a flow of fear fear of this fear of that let's say fear uh, the flow of madness the next drafts are all about craft because finally uh, crafting is something which is very needed especially if you you would like to see your work published in journals and magazines then craft is very important and investment in craft is equally important now if you want to learn craft without going to workshops and mfa programs there is a way just read good quality poetry if you want to write good quality check the craft how they how they uh, how they employ craft that is also very simple uh, you just have to see where they line break you have to see what words they use why do they use these words and not these words you can actually self learn i am a big proponent of self learn because i have self learned a lot of things i'm not a uh, i'm not a student of literature i'm a student of commerce i have done my mba in marketing i'm not a literature student i came to writing by writing i am a self learner i may be teaching at various places i might have even been a mentor at iowa's uh, summer institute but i'm actually a self learner The chat box is overflowing with the appreciations, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so ma very much. Thank you so much, I spell for having me over. Ma uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, can I interrupt? I mean, please, if you don't mind. Please, you're not interrupting. Uh, uh, please do. <laughs> uh, ma'am, it was a wonderful presentation, and almost all the ideas I totally accept. What you said. And I like the story of the inclusion and exclusion as well. And I like your Coco idea. And as we're talking about haiku, <laughs> as we're talking about haiku, I started writing one. I don't know whether it was a, a haiku, but just I'd like to read out. The earth is shown because the sun is blown. That is one. <laughs> the other one, the day, yeah. the day begins with the sun rising. And ends with the sun drowning. <laughs> Do you call it a haiku? I don't know. I have no idea. No, no, they are not haikus. But but I really love first of all your feedback, and secondly the fact that you could not stop yourself from trying to write haiku. This is these are not really haiku, <laughs> but they have the material of the haiku in them. Yeah, because okay. they know about the sun and the metrical pattern. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. You yeah. you you need to just um, know while you're looking at the sun and the moon. What are you as a poet thinking? Okay. Okay. Where are you? Where uh, are you? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so See, much. I will be I will be doing a workshop uh, this uh, this month on twenty seventh and twenty eighth at the Himalayan Writing Retreat. Uh, if you all are interested, uh, do join in. I do a lot of haiku hyphen workshops in general. So you okay. can just follow my uh, uh, my social media pages and you will know about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, I have read somewhere. There is a question from my side as well. Yes. I have read that uh, creativity is contagious. So, uh, <laughs> can you just throw some light on this uh, small quote? Uh, <laughs> creativity is contagious. So, from a point of view. See, I can only tell you by experience rather than you know uh, thinking about it. When I used to do these haiku uh, workshops, I'm telling you, people would not stop writing haiku. Okay. Because once you start, like Pushpa is just one one new example who wanted to do something immediately, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. happens. So that is it is contagious because it's I I think the haiku is like the candy crush of words and images. Mm -hmm. Once you start, you can't stop, and you don't even need a workshop. You can just 
read a lot of good haiku from good sites don't read them from those bad sites with bad haiku read them from i can give you the list i can share the list later with shalini read them from some good sites you will you will instantly self learn how to use two images and it's a, it's very addictive and there's no cure okay there's no mm. cure Okay, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I must say, um, actually, I want to quote uh, Maya Angelou. She has said, "You can't use up your creativity. The more you use, the more we have." Uh, so she has right and uh, actually proved this. Yes. Um, so okay. I would like to I would like to thank you? all of. all of you and i i just want to urge all of you because also the culture of reviews i feel that we we as a community we don't review each other's works enough we shy away i have even heard comments like i am not an authority in commenting no please i urge all of you here today because we spent some time together if you ever want to review my my books they are on amazon you could even place a review on amazon it doesn't matter i love receiving reviews and it doesn't you don't have to write good reviews okay you could write any kind of reviews but do interact okay well, thank you so much ma'am it was indeed insightful and interactive session and you so patiently answered the questions i am also thankful to all the participants for putting up interesting questions now uh, moving on let me take an opportunity uh, to introduce and invite the chairperson of uh, today's uh, sunday sahitik satsang dr k s Sara Dambal, ma'am. Ma'am is currently working as assistant professor and head of department, uh, Sri Vasavi College, Iroh, Tamil Nadu. Her enchanting career in academia scrolls over a decade of rich teaching and research works. Her arduous academic expertise has enabled her to guide twelve MPhil, and uh, she is currently guiding three uh, PhD scholars. She has also completed UGC minor research project. Uh, entitled "Sensitizing Contemporary Women Towards Empowerment: Role of Indian Women Writers in English." Her research interest is re reflected in her presentation of papers in national and inter international seminars. She has, to her credit, a number of published papers and has also penned uh, eight book chapters. Her rich academic insight led her to be the resource person of various seminars, conferences, and symposiums. She has also delivered. a uh, radio talk in all india radio ma'am i invite you to give your valuable comments on the topic over to you ma'am am i audible good evening to everyone yes ma'am good evening you are audible you may continue i am taking a long breath the talk that we have heard the deliberations that has been done by our resource person creative writer roshan potkar this platform indeed is an honor for me and it has been created for many academicians like us with the ardent sacrificing enticing effort taken by our president of icepel dr anupama vora ma'am who has created a platform like this wherein we see all the varied natures of academics that in every sunday the Sa sunday sahitya satsang that we pick up and i would here mention dr gansham sir who's been a source of inspiration the every word that he utters and the kind of spirit that he carries along with him and the inspiration that he creates very few academic forums that we have like this i spell this is indeed an a very wonderful platform many of us we been wondering like can the quality the sec the perseverance towards the, attaining knowledge so all this is being fulfilled i would imagine i would uh, visualize the journey of i spell i spell a long way to go 
and I bow my head to all the noble hearts who have been rendering their services, their expertise, and bringing such a platform. It might appear real, though it's not real. We are all seeing each other, but we cannot be together. But this platform has made it possible. Coming to the, the, the talk, the resource person, the creative writer, her excellence have been gaining international repute, representing India, in fact, being proud to be on in the race and in the line is our resource person today. It's like mesmerizing. Might be the tone of the thing is also is changing. I just wonder how Madam actually goes along with the way that she does. A writer is not made in a day. Writers are special because of their efforts, their hard work. As Roshal Putkar ma'am said, self-learning and not looking back. The inspiration that she has created even before she completes her talk. There is one aspirant writer who comes up. This is what is the essence of the motto of I spell here. So it was wonderful, ma'am, to listen to you. I was just thinking, how could it be when you visualize, you know, a word is just like a worm in the apple. It can do wonders. So creative writing is a, a great attribute of human intelligence. The whole milieu of things actually unfold from the imagination of a writer. We as Nepal, a Nobel laureate for literature, in his Nobel lecture, I quote, all the details of life and the quicks and the friendships can be laid out for us. But the mystery of the writing still remains. The mystery of the writing still remains, unquote. Today, Roshal Putkar, ma'am, have arisen in a, a second thought. No, you can work on it. It can never be a mystery. So it takes different forms. The way you receive things on writing, that is most important. So how it has been created, it differs from person to person. Creation itself is a flamboyant one. The world, the nature, the human race, Everything is enthralling. So do creative writing. God has created as we believe the world. And if God comes and talks to us of how he has done everything, how he has interrelated things in our life, how he has created each one to correlate for a better life. Today's resource person, who is a creator of literature, has come to us, you know, to talk about the nuances of it. So, so this is one of the very wonderful thing that we should hear, how the creator explains how a creation takes place. Very beautifully done, Roshal Madam has actually said, we become what we breathe. I, could I cannot stop from mentioning a few of the things that she has deliberated today. We write because we are disturbed. There is some closure, some redeeming things, some unwilling, willing things, 
so we write. So there should be something that is that has to be behind for our writing. How a word, an important component in writing, has rhythmic nature, expressive nature, which even becomes the skin of the meaning. And the most wonderful thing is the text is like a light and sound. Find your darkness to know your light. Find your silence to know your sound. And how she very, you know, very easily goes to explain the different forms of writing that she is undergoing. And even told us when to write, how to note her bio, uh, bio rhythm, how to set your things right, how to start, how to just venture. Though we are academicians, it's like most brilliant people around who have served so many years, never opens a college. So that trick is different. But here, madam, you have instilled the confidence that it's not something that is beyond your reach. You have talked about different, very simple, though it might look into haiku, haibun, flash fiction, story, novel, how that has actually been done more consciously or unconsciously by unfurling of the mind, how it actually should be an obsession and how it is cyclical and how we have to draft and figure out the functions of the story. I have read that you misunderstand a writer if you fail to know a writer as a person. You have very clearly brought out with your creation by reading out the knotted inside me and war specials and other writings. How technically each writing has actually gone to and how patience above all is very important. And she went on to say haiku, the three, uh, the three line poem, but very simply have segregated things in such a way, just concentrate on two images juxtaposing in poetry. What a wonderful explanation, man. Hope many of us here take up things in creative writing just for your inspiration that we received today. The way you made us understand the nuances of writing. In fact, it was a magical one. I'm just finding words. It was so mesmerizing. You take, a lot, take, a long, uh, take us along the fantasy and the reality. And finally, you have to how sit and write how a word has to work and how a theme has to go on. So it was like you have started, this was a, just a beginning for many of us here. And you have not failed to even tell how in reality haiku and haiban, how it actually does the difference between the two. And how one thought is actually come together and how the difference between the haiku and the haiban you have read very carefully. I have listened to many of your YouTubes and other videos. It was wonderful just reading the creator herself reading her creation. So that was the feeling that we had. And the kind of involvement that you bring about, you know, sharing your knowledge to others sharing your, uh, the boldness, the confidence, the efforts that you have taken to others. So it was wonderful listening to you, ma'am. You have very clearly brought about everything that has been related to creative writing. Definitely we academicians who are here would follow your footsteps though not to the level 
that you have attained, at least for a big, uh, just to start with. I have uh, had many things about, known about writing and the art of creative writing and how we have read and we have taught students and we have scribbled few in our pages also and what we can, we have published a few, might be in the academic journals. And uh, it, we just take it as an art, just to write with the, uh, the vocabulary that we have, the feelings that we have, the emotions that we have, and we just bring it. And as you said, the techniques also should be taken care of. And that can be done by reading. All this, we take note of it. And it's like an apprentice who learned from his master the trick of the trade, effort made consciously or unconsciously. As you've been talking about 10% inspiration and 90% perception has to be taken for the reading of the works that actually makes the most out of it. To make yourself realize how you should be different from others, how you should go on the track, on the craft. Paul Dawson in her book, recent books have uh, talked about the role of a writer as a public intellectual, how a future of the creative writing in the contemporary academics takes place. Can writing be taught or should writing be taught based on the writing courses that we have in our academics in the, as a degree, as a course? As you said in workshops, in training sessions, it can be achieved. And a young minds, I say irrespective of the age, can ca catch the cra craft very easily. Everything actually uh, um, makes me feel that there is always a meaning to live and meaning to grow. As I spell has said, facilitate to elevate. Every incident that takes place in ISPEL actually teaches your presence, your the ambience that you create as a creator and how this mental process should bring about divergent thinking. The forms that you have taken up, story, poetry, haiku, haibun, flash fiction, how all these forms actually you bring about the divergent thinking instead of convergent thinking. Being, uh, bringing about multiple perspectives to many, if not all. As you said, reading is also very important. Reading and writing go hand in hand. Reading values writing and writing is valued only by reading. Valued to such an extent that the reader knows the ways to look at things, attains fulfillment by reading a text, it can be an inspiration, even a personal connection. And above all, it can be therapeutic. A work of art, a work of writing can bring about so many changes internally and externally. It brings about the boundless nature of the world. When you talk about your poetry, how many things come into, all the uh, factors of nature come into, the animal world, the human world, the nature, everything. I remember of uh, uh, taking a class to the undergraduate students on the management or uh, BCom, been enthralled by Shakespeare's lines, Wordsworth's lines. We've just been going on taking. We just look at their faces. They just look at us. Oh, what is she doing? But here we could just have that connection that you bring about. We could understand the essence of your emotions and how it goes by. So creative writing has this kind of a 
impact on each one of us. As you said, it is a worm in the apple of my apple of a mind. So going into the technicality of the language, there are many, the structure, plot, theme, characterization, imagery, setting, tone, the mood. There are different for, forms and we have millions to talk. And we have a lot to uh, uh, a lot of writers to aspirate, uh, aspire. We have seen so many who have actually created impact. Just to take Wordsworth's line, it just says, behold her in sol solitary reaper. She says, behold her single in the field. He doesn't say see her, witness her, look at her. It's because he had uh, heard the sound of it, sound of the song, and he was searching for the girl. So he uses the word behold. Yes. Uh, so Sarah, the word, uh, please yes. conclude it now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it's like how we take things into it. So it needs the creative writing has many creative words that play academicians like us to in small ways that this res uh, today's resource person can teach us how to take up the art of writing. Thank you, ma'am, for being such an inspire inspiration and a torch bearer through your writings and your exemplary deliberations. Life should be taken as a journey, not as a race. And I spell's inherent quality is actually, that is the journey that we take. And the co co spirit is what the opportunity given to all here. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Shah Dambal, ma'am, for your uh, insightful comments. I must say uh, it was a uh, uh, very insightful session, and your comments, your valuable comments and observations added icing on the cake. Uh, okay, uh, now moving on, uh, I invite Dr. Shalini Yadav, ma'am, to uh, carry on the session. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, okay, Rizwana. Yes, uh, I would like to thank, first of all, uh, Rochelle, ma'am, for accepting this invitation. And uh, this was completely awesome, awe-inspiring, and wonderful session, ma'am, by you. And I exhibit a deep sense of gratitude towards you for accepting this invitation and for giving such a reflective deliberation on creative writing process, covering each and everything related to short stories, haiku and haibun, and for on answering all the questions of audience so adroitly and good naturedly, up to the expectations being a very good soul, and uh, reading and writing haiku and haibun, uh, what I feel and what you also said that uh, it is a kind of remedy for people's mental and psychological anxieties. And uh, in this uh, techno advanced competitive era, it, uh, it is proven also. And when Richard Wright's daughter, Julia, when uh, her father, Richard Wright, was uh, ill in 1959, he started writing haikus. And he wrote 4,000 haikus. And out of those 4,000 haikus, uh, 817 were published in his collection, Haiku, The uh, Other World. In that time, she had said that her for her father, haiku poems were self-development antidotes against illness and that breaking down into syllables matched the shortness of his breath. So uh, we can say that this kind of miniature can create wonders. And here uh, I would like to quote the lines, uh, what, uh, uh, what the belief of Richard Wright's daughter was Quote, it is just beginning, mind is not intent to rest, a haiku, a cure, unquote. So distilled and crystallized, Jaffe created and crafted aesthetically by Roshul Ma'am here, uh, such good haikus Ma'am has quoted and Haiban also Ma'am has uh, told us that how, in, uh, how we can write a good ha Haiban and good haiku. And uh, in a way uh, that completely uh, you can understand and you can uh, do 
you can try your hand in writing haiku and haiban now all of you so ma'am short stories from bombay hangover are also a must read i would say to each and everybody and uh, her another book uh, uh, paper asylum is also very good very crisp uh, haibans are there with a short uh, uh, you can say shorts of haikus uh, with them the uh, and uh, these are very uh, kind of uh, very good uh, haikus and uh, the stories are also very good and they make you captive and an ardent reader and a fan of ma'am's book which i have already become and right now also on my table three books are kept i especially thank dr k s saradhamal ma'am for cheering the session and adding her own valued inputs in it i uh, wholeheartedly thank uh, rajwana khatun also for uh, proceeding the whole event so gracefully and successfully and now uh, i would like to request uh, dr sachdeva sir to say a few words and honor the dignitaries with certificates as a token of honor and gratitude sachdeva sir please uh, honor the dignitaries with certificates now yes uh, thank you so much uh, uh, dr ghansham sir uh, <clears throat> yes sure i'll be glad to do that but it was indeed a very good lecture i was in psc duty and i started listening there itself while the exam was winding up and i was enjoying the lecture and um, i did take some screenshots also about the words and the various uh, but and i was trying to listen to the whole lecture during the examination uh, winding process as well and i could listen half of it fully well it was wonderful lecture and about i the chairperson's remarks were equally enlightening uh, i congratulate ispel on such wonderful speakers and chairpersons and also the speaker who happens to be a writer roshili and the yes we can uh, uh, go ahead uh, should we go for the next roshali podka i saw your publications as well and i was equally impressed by your creative work and the chairperson's remarks and the program was a bit different today like last week's program was a bit different that was on poetry recitation this too was in some way different and uh, very enlightening it is good to have variety of uh, this kind of uh, academic endeavors at times so my, accept my heartiest congratulations on this occasion to the whole team to the main speaker as well as the chairperson and the computer coordinator and to dr j ghansham pramod ji everyone on this such a successful and a different kind of uh, presentation today so that's it i hope i was audible yes sir you were audible now this could be the time for your certificate distribution isn't it hello shall we move towards a vote of thanks yes shalini dr shalini kindly ask dr sasdeva to present the certificates please yeah yeah yes sir has done sir, sir has come forward the yeah yeah sir come forward let us all present the certificates together no sir today i am at the backward place so please <laughs> oh, yeah please start sir you please okay. present the certificate to all the people okay okay so 
let us come forward and let us see the certificate, the first certificate. The first certificate goes to the main speaker, Rashley Potkar. Am I correct in pronouncing the name? Rashley Potkar. Rochelle. Yeah, Rochelle. Okay. I was Rochelle. wondering the correct pronunciation of this one. So this certificate goes to the keynote speaker, the main speaker, Rochelle Potkar, on her successful presentation of her, of her this uh, <clears throat> on the wonderful title that she, she has chosen to speak. So congratulations, madam. And uh, I appreciate each and every word of yours. And we are really enlightened and benefited by your lecture. And I was uh, <clears throat> very keen to have, I have had a few screenshots of your lecture presentation, which impressed me a lot. Yes, thank you so much and congratulations. And the next certificate goes to is certificate of appreciation. The certificate is proudly presented to Dr. K. Sardhambal. Am I right? Sardhambal. Yes, Sardhambal. Oh, okay. Uh, you uh, actually, the remarks were uh, the is the assistant professor and head department of English, Sri Vasavi College, Iro, Tamil Nadu. I equally appreciate very maturing remarks and very pithy point and sayings and observations. They are very enlightening indeed. And uh, <clears throat> I appreciate that the points that you have raised. Congratulations, madam. Uh, Thank you, sir. For Thank you. your on your successful uh, uh, observations and remarks made by you. Yes. Okay. The next certificate would go to Rizwana Khatun on her successful uh, comparing of the program. I started listening to you first and uh, I saw that you were maintaining your poise and the um, balance of your voice and tone and very calm and quiet manner you are presenting, trying to, uh, you are comparing the program. Today, what I observed is each one of you had a very smooth voice, very liquidity of expression, and there was a fluidity of movement, each one of yours. It was calm, soothing sort of presentation. Nobody was in panic. Nobody was in hurry. Everyone had his or her point of view to speak. That's a wonderful thing. There was some kind of melody that I could observe today in all the speakers, whosoever spoke here, I could see the rhythm, the melody, and the music in what you have said. So this certificate goes to Rizwana Khatun, Aston Prophet. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. English. Government RBR, NES, PG College, uh, yes. So, congratulations to the whole team. Uh, yes. And the next certificate. No, sir. Next no, event. Sir. And the next, upcoming, again, upcoming event. my certificate of appreciation to promote G for managing everything. No, no, this is upcoming <laughs> event flyer. So wonderful event. And finally, to General Secretary of ISPEL, uh, Dr. G. A. Ghansham is a strong pillar of, is a strong foundation and pillar to IESPL that uh, because of whom the programs uninterruptedly and uh, they continue unhampered and there is an incessant showering of these academic uh, blessings on the participants. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, shall over to you now. Shall we move on? Yes, yes. Uh, I express my heartfelt gratitude towards all the August uh, academicians, literarians present here uh, with your amiable, pre amiable presence. And uh, I thank each and every executive uh, committee member of ISPEL, including uh, founder and general secretary, Professor Gansham, 
uh, Anupma ma'am, uh, Dr. Anupma uh, Vora ma'am, Dr. Asok Sachdeva sir, uh, Dr. Uh, Prashanta Chakrati sir, Dr. Chamta ma'am, uh, Pramod Dhingle sir, and a special thank thanks also goes to Pramod Dhingle sir because, uh, because of handling all the technicalities to conduct the event so successfully on this virtual platform. And finally here, uh, again, I would like to thank uh, Roshel ma'am, Sara ma'am and uh, Rizwana uh, for uh, conducting this uh, stellar event. And uh, we would like to end it now. Everybody uh, have a good cup of tea after the session. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all and congratulations. Thank you so Salini, much. Salini, ma'am. Thank you so Thank much you. for a wonderful session. I had an opportunity last week and this, this week also. I'm so uh, lucky to be a part of the Stalwart sessions. Thank you so much. And uh, Rizwana, ma'am, excellent uh, comparing. And the resource persons are uh, excellent today. Thank you, Shalini ma'am, once again, Ganesham sir and the members of the ISPEL. Sushila here, Dr. Sushila from Bangalore. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful.